So welcome back to another episode of FIFA History. Today we're taking a look at FIFA 17 in 2019. We're going to take a look at everything that the game had to offer, what the new features were at the time, and what it's currently like in 2019. If you enjoy FIFA history videos, we do these episodes every week, so I suggest you subscribe today if you're new to the channel. And basically, FIFA 17 was marketed as like a change. Football has changed were the exact words of the trailer, and uh, that campaign tried to show everyone that, you know, somehow FIFA has changed. And I wouldn't say that FIFA changed that much, but, you know, the introduction of the Frostbite engine was a big deal at the time because graphically, it was a big improvement over FIFA 16's Ignite engine. They also introduced the Journey, which I thought was going to be cool at the time, but then it didn't really turn out to be that good. But anyway, let's see what the scores were for FIFA 17. 8.4 out of 10 from IGN, 9 out of 10 from GameSpot, 83% from PC Gamer. So as always, we're going to start with the practice arena just like we do in every episode and this time in FIFA 17 the practice arena was like a stadium I'm not sure if that's a generic stadium it probably is but it's better than that like training ground we get in like future FIFA games like FIFA 19 and stuff but it's not as good as the background stadium thing that we had in FIFA 16 where you could play in real life stadiums like the new camp or the Juventus stadium and stuff this one was just this stadium and you couldn't change it and obviously this practice arena was crap as well because you only had the select sides and exit buttons. Like you couldn't do creator set piece. You guys know about that. I talk about it every episode nearly. Anyway, let's back out of the practice arena because there's nothing to really get excited about. And let's move on. Alright, in terms of the EA catalog, this one was a good catalog as well. We had the classic kits, which we don't get anymore. Um, I think they got rid of them in FIFA 18, or I think FIFA 18 had a few. I'm, I can't really remember. But yeah, FIFA 17 had no issues in the classic kits department. You could buy celebrations and all that stuff, pretty much what we're used to in current games as well. Here is a look at the soundtrack for FIFA 17. I feel like the best soundtrack was in FIFA 15. FIFA 16 had one or two songs that carried it for the whole year, like the Sam Smith song. But FIFA 17 and onwards have been pretty disappointing in terms of the soundtrack. Maybe you guys have some classics from FIFA 17. I don't really remember a song in my head from FIFA 17. Now, when it came to FIFA 17 Ultimate Team, I did not play one game at all. Look at this. If you take a look at my record, 0, 0, and 0. I did not do anything in this game, mate. I think I was playing Pez 17 more than FIFA 17. Of course, if you want to still give EA your money... You can buy points on FIFA 17. This one's actually cheaper than FIFA 16. FIFA 16 was like $151 for 12,000 FIFA points. Today, in FIFA 17, it's $120. So you're saving $30. Bucks. Um, that could be a good deal for you if you're still playing FIFA 17 or something. I don't know. Let's open a pack. I've got 5,000 coins. Probably never going to come back to this game anyway. Might as well open a pack while we're here. Imagine if I pull a Ronaldo or something. Then I have to play FIFA 17. Doesn't look too good, though. Yeah, Tos Tosun? Tosun? Nah, that's not exciting, mate. Now, according to online web pages, there were seven exciting new features in Ultimate Team from FIFA 17. So, squad challenges became a thing. One to watch players became a thing. New legends. Foot champions was also introduced in this uh, game. Ultimate Team Championship Series. Pre-order kits. And play your friends team offline. Obviously, Ultimate Team had more new features than career mode. And speaking of career mode, here is a look at FIFA 17 career mode. Look familiar? It's pretty much the same as FIFA 16. Pretty much the same as FIFA 19, it just doesn't have the animated GIFs for the news section. So, in terms of features though, um, we had the squad ranking feature, which was still a part of the game at the time. Obviously taken out in FIFA 19. Where is the injury list? I'm pretty sure we had that still. I think it was hidden. Yeah, there it is. Injury list is there. So, you know, that was a thing as well. Now, the one thing that they did take out in this career mode was the request funds feature. And of course, people still miss that feature to this day. Like, if I go to the office section... Is there's nothing. It usually hides behind one of these tiles or it's one of these tiles or something. But yeah, in this game, it was gone. In all fairness, though, there were a few features that got introduced into FIFA 17 career mode. The first one was the finances tab where you could check your profit, earnings and expenses, transactions as well, and your budget stuff. And to me, this is pretty useless. I rarely check these numbers. They don't really do anything. Like you can't um, manually affect these numbers by, you know, putting the ticket prices down or selling shirts at a cheaper cost and stuff. So it's pretty pointless to me. It's just more of a graphical thing. And then there's another feature, board expectations. This one came into FIFA 17 as well. In FIFA 17, they also introduced the concept managers thing. I'm sure you guys are sick of looking at them by now, but at the time they were new. They were pretty cool because, you know, we didn't really have anything like this in a FIFA game. And you could see these guys in the cutscenes and stuff in game. But by now, you know, in FIFA 19, there's no extra managers like these are the same guys that are still in FIFA 19 and people want actual customization now not just concept managers now when it came to career mode I think I played just one season with Watford and I did win the league so I did enjoy that career mode but it was later on in the year probably like July of 2017 
because I got bored of Pez. I mostly played Pez 17. Uh, you guys will probably remember my Liverpool Master League, my Inter Milan Master League as well. They're still on the channel, and I really enjoyed Pez gameplay over FIFA's that year. Now, at the time, EA thought it was a good idea to implement the Journey, which was like a story mode for FIFA. And FIFA didn't really have a story mode at the time, but the problem is they didn't do it properly. You couldn't create your own guy. It was all about Alex Hunter, and pretty much the storyline was linear. So whatever you picked... It didn't really matter at the end because every decision led to the same thing as everyone else. I know a lot of FIFA players didn't even touch the journey, but me personally, I'll admit that I did play all three. And I did enjoy it to an extent, but it did become boring in certain parts. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm glad that it's gone, but I think it's just being replaced by Volta now. Because I think there's going to be like a journey mode in Volta as well, which lasts for like six hours. In FIFA 17, they did change the free kick style a little bit. This one I hated. This one was never accurate. Uh, the ball would go who knows where every time it left your foot. And I did enjoy the older versions of FIFA when it came to free kicks. And I could still bang them in today, to be honest. And uh, with this new version that only lasted three years because they've changed it again now, just could have mastered it, man. I don't like it. So we're using my Watford career mode team. We're going to play one more game with these guys because I want to see what it's like to play with them again. We had a pretty middle class team but it was pretty strong at the same time like there was no world class standouts like a Messi or Ronaldo here but everyone just put in the work like we had Pulisic, Pereira, uh, Success, Defrel up top as well fostering goals so it was nothing special but this team really did the job so we're playing a community shield game Watford versus Southampton it's been a while since I picked up FIFA 17 I don't think I've touched it since 2017 to be honest once FIFA 18 came out but yeah, with this game, like I said earlier in the video, I do remember playing more Master League and more Pez. I don't know, I just enjoyed that much more that year. I don't know why, I just, I don't know, just felt a bit better. But um, with FIFA 17, I did have a good Watford team. So we're back today with this Watford team, and we'll see if we can bring back the memories. Now, as I play FIFA 17, like passing it around and stuff, it does feel more like FIFA 19 than what FIFA 16 did. Obviously, this was the Frostbite Engine era now, so it's going to feel pretty similar to FIFA 19, but I can really you know, notice it. Now, some people say that the gameplay did go a bit backwards. Look at that. They just strip over each other. The The gameplay did go a bit backwards when they went to Frostbite. I probably agree with that. I think my favorite gameplay was like FIFA 15 or FIFA 16. Well, not really FIFA 16. FIFA 15 was my favorite, I think, because FIFA 16 had issues at the start. And of course, if you played FIFA 17, let me know down below. That's a nice ball. Can we get there? No. But if you've ever played it, let me know your thoughts and, uh, you know, if you liked it or you didn't like it. I'd be interested to hear your stories about this game. Nice ball inside to Gabby Adini. Could get a shot here. And he does. Good save by the keeper. Now, when it comes down to it, FIFA 17 feels like FIFA 19, pretty much. I mean, it hasn't really changed much, but that's because it came out, like, just a few years ago. So it's not a game that you're going to be coming back to anytime soon. Maybe in another few years. Maybe once we move on to the PS5 and stuff, we'll look back at FIFA 17, just like we do, like, FIFA 12 and stuff. But... At the moment, it just feels too similar to what we've already got, and it's not really considered a vintage game in my eyes yet. I think the old FIFA game that I miss the most is FIFA 15. I think that was my favorite in this series so far. It just had the perfect balance between gameplay and like career mode stuff. That was a good shot, but just a bit off target. Just had the perfect balance, and you know that, that's something that I would go back and play at this time of the year as well. Chip it over the top. What a ball. Oh, what a ball. What a goal. Yes, what a goal. We worked out well, man. That's a beautiful goal. That was like some FIFA pro player esports stuff, man. Look at that. We had the, the guy holding it up, chips it over the top to the runner. Keeper came out. We laid it off to the to the other guy there who taps it in. Beautiful stuff, man. That, that, I should be on the esports scene, man. Laid off. Defrel's through on goal. He's going to score, maybe. Oh, it gets blocked. Van Dijk is like the, the rock in this game, man. You know what? It feels like FIFA 17. I mean, I know I'm only playing one game and I'm not versing a great team, but it feels even better than FIFA 19. I'm not even joking. I don't know why. It just feels like, I don't know, it just feels much more enjoyable. I think FIFA 19 is just that bad that it's not even worth playing in 2019. I might have to make a video called, is FIFA 19 worth playing in 2019? The answer is no, to be honest. Southampton do well here. They've got a counter-attack. Bufo, he's got a lot of pace and he should have scored. But it's a good save by Forster. Lay it off. Amrabat plays a through. We sort of hold it up. Here's Pulisic. What a ball. Got a score here. Oh, what a save. So as the game is coming to an end, it feels refreshing to actually come back to FIFA 17. I said it feels like FIFA 19, but FIFA 19 is that bad that it's just unplayable in 2019. And, you know, any other game feels a bit more fresher than FIFA 19 at the moment. Obviously, is it a game that I miss coming back to? No. 
This is my first game in about two years. But was it a bad experience? No. So if you need something else to watch, make sure you tap the card in the middle. It'll take you to the FIFA History playlist where you can watch all the episodes I've done so far. I'll see you next time.